God loves the world that He gave His only begotten Son in order that whosoever believes in Him, in him would not perish. That is a verse from the Gospel of St. John, where, chapter 3, verse 16. The aim of this video is enlightenment into the cunning exploits masterminded by Dr. Yusuf Zidane, the author of the novel Azazine, to deviate Christian historical facts that had been documented by prominent historians. We use the term masterminded since the author proclaims that he has no historical errors and that when confronted with the errors, he withdraws to proclaim that the novel is fiction. The question is then, what is fiction and what is fact? The danger of this novel is that Islamic readers consider the novel to have exposed the hidden Christian history that Christianity had concealed throughout the ages. The novel attacks the fundamental Christian doctrines trying to destroy Christianity by following the steps of Dan Brown in his novel The Da Vinci Code. video, all its onerous historical events of the novel, will be brought to light and the truth discovered. We will deal only with errors detrimental to Christian history throughout the novel, as an enormous extent of the novel represents sexual immorality and contains a great deal of sexual innuendo and profanity that we will not approach. It should be noted that the meaning of the word Azazel is not Beelzebub, which is a synonym for Satan. The Old Testament rites of Moses on the Day of Atonement, Leviticus 16, two goats were offered to God as a sacrifice. One was offered as a sin offering and the other sent into the wilderness for separation. Leviticus 16, 9 to 10, And Aaron shall bring the goat upon which the Lord's lot fell and offer him for a sin offering. But the goat on which the lot fell to be as a zeal shall be presented alive before the Lord to make an atonement with him and to let him go before Azazel into the wilderness. Beelzebub, however, in the Holy Bible, means Satan. A summary of the novel. The novel begins with an introduction dated the 4th of the 4th, 2004, by the translator of the manuscript written in Syriac, and discovered ten years ago in an archaeological ruin in northwest of Aleppo. It is stated that the manuscript dates back to the first half of the 5th century. The translator mentions that the author of this manuscript is an Egyptian monk named Hepa, a person not otherwise mentioned elsewhere except in this manuscript. Hepa began composing his writings at the persuasion of Azazel, who suggested to him that he withdraw for a 40-day retreat to record what he had encountered in his life. These 40 days were the last days of Hepa spent in the monastery, which he reached after coming from Jerusalem in the north of Aleppo. Events start with Heber, the monk physician, coming from Ehmim, where he studied philosophy and medicine, to Alexandria to increase his scientific learning. His mother, whom he disliked, was a Christian, whom he describes in an appalling way. On the other hand, he loved his pagan father, whom Heber sympathized with greatly. He described his father's murder, 
when he was nine years old at the hands of ordinary Christians in a hideous way. His mother thereafter, as he says, married one of his father's murderers and Heber was reared in the house of his uncle. In Alexandria, he met with Octavia, the pagan, and spent three nights with her in a scrupulous relationship. He knew Hypatia, the beautiful pagan philosopher, and loved her greatly, but as she was killed by a Christian mob, led by Peter the Reader, he had no time to become deeply involved with her. Heber intensely elaborated the description of her horrible murder by claiming that it was a result of incitement and promotion by Bishop Cyril, whom Heber also depicts in the most ugliest qualities. Following the violent shock of Hypatia's murder, he tore off his chest cross, throwing it into the ground and departed Alexandria in the year AD 415, after spending around seven years there. He then went to Palestine, where he spent three years, and thereafter settled in Jerusalem for a period of six years. There he met with priest Nestorius and Bishop Theodore of Mopsutia during their pilgrimage to Jerusalem. Heber loved Nestorius greatly, and their relationship became very intimate. Nestorius encouraged him to go to Aleppo and wrote him a recommendation for admission into the before-mentioned monastery in the north of Aleppo. During this period, Nestorius visited Heber once, just before his ordination as Bishop of Constantinople, and Heber visited Nestorius in Constantinople after Nestorius's ordination. As the zeal's conversation with Heber began at a period when he suffered in a coma for 20 days while in this monastery. During his stay, he also became acquainted with a divorced Christian woman named Martha and committed adultery with her. His residence in this monastery ended with his 40-day retreat, as previously mentioned. Heber, after completing his manuscript, buried it at the gate of the monastery and irreversibly departed. Free, as he put it, and of course, that meant liberation from the restraints of religion and monasticism in the pursuit of women imitating mountain pigeons.